I'm going to texture the open binder first. And uh, this may take a little while. What I'm going to do is I've got everything here. I deleted the paper uh, mesh part. I'm going to try something else for this. So we'll just see how this goes. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, with everything there, I'm going to press A. Go into edit mode when everything's selected. I'm going to press U, smart UV project. Some island margin to 0.03 for now. And smart UV project. And I get this. Now, the underside here, all this stuff, is not going to be well seen. And so, I'm going to select all this stuff here. There it is there. Control L, I guess. That is not going to be well seen. Control tab to zoom in on this. And by the way, before I do that, okay. I'm going to take this stuff. I'm going to G. I'm going to move it down here. I'm going to scale it quite a bit down because we're really not going to see that. These things I'm going to want relatively large. But in particular, I want this stuff here. All of this stuff. The inside cover. I want that larger on my UV map. Control L. I'm going to move that to the top. Because that is pretty important. And this, I've got UV sync on here. That's pretty important. That's okay. Okay. That stuff I'm going to make bigger. I'll just leave it up here for now. Okay. Now, I've got some stuff that repeats. small that is. Just take that, move that up there. You'll take all of this. And in UV Pack Master 3, I'm going to select a line similar. And make sure over here I've got lock overlapping. Because these are going to repeat. Okay. We'll leave that there for now. These things are part of that. And I'm going to try. Um, where am I? There. They're on top of each other. I can now scale that bigger. So that that is a bigger texel density. And this stuff here. What is that? Let's try just a line similar. Because they're, you know, they're just mirrored stuff. Oh, is that all of that? That's all of that. Let's make that a bit bigger. Where's that piece? Because the smart EV project sometimes makes them pretty small. Increase the size of that. And 
and just do this by hand. I'm not really good at this. I just do whatever. So what's left? All this stuff. Okay. Let's try uh, a line similar. some of this in. Some of this stuff is not super important. Okay. Now where am I? This stuff is the paper and sets. What's this piece here? the size of it. Okay, I'm going to take this guy and put him back in here. I'm just start putting stuff back in as best I can. I have to scale some stuff down a bit. Over here now. Not the best unwrap ever, but we're going to try it. So with that done, I'm now going to export this as an FBX and bring it into Substance Painter. Okay, so there it is. So I'm going to bake the mesh maps. I'm going to add an ambient occlusion channel. Bake mesh maps. I'm going to go 2048. Use low poly as high poly and uncheck that. Okay, so there it is. Now, what we'll do is we'll start with some of the easy stuff. You'll see that I've got three materials, so I define those in in Blender. The cover, okay, the insets, that's these things here, and the metal. So I'll start with the insets. I'll delete the default material. I'm going to come over to Smart Materials, and I'm going to type Paper. Now, this is just something from Substance Share. Um, so you can just download it as a smart material. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete the folds, dirt spots, and details. I'm just going to leave that. And I'm okay with that, just like that. Okay, so that's it for the moment. Let's come to the metal. Def delete that. Steel. And I don't know what to use. Um, you could try anything. Just do that. Okay. Um... Texture's not amazing, but it's it's okay. I'm just gonna leave it like that. And then for the cover itself, um, I created this this leather material uh, with some uh, sort of edgeware. Uh, 
And what it is, is just a fill layer with the basic color. <clears throat> and then I, I duplicated that and I put on a mask editor. I can just do, maybe I'll just do this. I'll try to do more quickly. Okay. Fill layer. Oh, let's put it up there. make this one a little darker and that one's a little lighter and put on a black mask and add a generator and a mask editor here and bring the curvature all the way up Okay, so you're starting to see this this light area here, sort of a stylized thing. Bring that down to there. Okay. I'm going to duplicate that layer, I guess. Let's try a generator. Um, let's try dirt. Let's try actually curvature. Let's make this a bit lighter. Add dirt generator on there. And uh, let's see, let's duplicate this layer. Bring it up but here. Let's get rid of that. Let's add a generator on this one. I want um, this grunge leather like that. Darker, I want it lighter. I'm not sure. And that's basically how I did that. Um, it'll do. Let's try darker. Okay, something like that. And then maybe over top of that whole thing, I use a smart mask. Maybe I make it black, I don't know. Or brown. Well, on the other hand, maybe I'll make it light. Just a little bit of dirt there or dust or something you can play with this as much as you want really okay so, but anyways that's that's the general idea so far okay so now 
let's leave that. Let's come to the insets. There's the paper. Let's switch to orthographic, snap it into place. Let's reduce that a bit. And I'm going to make a fill layer. And I'm going to go to projection. And I'm going to bring in a texture. Okay, I chose him on make it a texture current project. So there it is. The in projection mode. Just need uh, color. I could try it with height, but I'll do it without height for now. I'm just gonna drag this texture into the base color. And I'm gonna hit tab. Zoom out a bit, press S, make it a bit smaller, move things around, make it a bit bigger. And the idea is I'm just going to paint it on there. We'll try this. Increase my brush size. And we'll just see what it looks like. There's no real depth to it, but you're not really going to see it from up close. So we do that. Let's have a look at that. Let's switch back to perspective. Well, we could put on um, anti-aliasing for the moment. So that's one way we could do it. I could also try, we'll go back to orthographic. I could also try here projection, but add height, a little a little bit of height. Let's bring that up, let's just see what that's like. Just see what that would look like. And it gives a little bit of, of 3D effect to it. With a bit of an edge to it. And then, you know, that's the... Uh, image or whatever I could add black mask I'll make this I really don't need all this it could be color and roughness or something or even just color let's make this darker like a darker brown or whatever to add some dirt to this use a smart mask let's try dirt dry it isn't too crazy it's pretty crazy Let's try dirt dusty and then um, come in here maybe reduce the balance let's just have a little bit of that there that's okay it goes on here it goes on there and that's it really unless I wanted to um, do one more Just to color, maybe roughness, I don't know. 
And I was thinking on here I could do generator. Um, Just of that. Does that look good or bad? <laughs> Alright, well, and um, just for the moment, we could try different color profiles. Right, so that's what I come up just real quickly without messing around with it too much. I got my paper on there, I got my clip, I got my binder. I would probably adjust that color and the insets. And that is the texturing of the open binder. And if I wanted to use this in Blender, I would just export those textures. Uh, and I may be doing that if I continue with this uh, Wolfenstein scene and using a couple of these things in there. So that's it for now, and I'll come back and we'll do the close binder next would be very very similar